Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, I would like to show you how you can set up two Arduino boards to Bluetooth communicate with each other. Now, there is lots and lots of applications for using Bluetooth communication between two Arduino boards. Now, I just have a simple circuit set up here to demonstrate it. It's just a push button that turns the LED off and on on the other board. And I'll demonstrate it working in a moment here. But uh, some of the other applications for this would be, say you have a robot you built, and you want to make a joystick to control it. And um, there is, you know, apps you can use your smartphone to Bluetooth control the robots. But um, the feel of a joystick controlling your robot, it's a lot different and a lot better than using a, a smartphone or Android tablet. And uh, I'm actually, I think in one of my next upcoming videos here, I'm going to put together a Bluetooth joystick. So um, if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe because I will be doing that here um, probably this week. But um, yeah, there's lots of different applications to have two Arduinos talk to each other. And you can Bluetooth control an Arduino with your smartphone, but say you want to control one Arduino with another Arduino wirelessly. Well, this is how you do it. So I'll demonstrate it working here quick, and then I'll tell you how it's set up, and then I'll uh, show you the sketch. So you see, I just push the button, LED comes on, push it again, it goes off. On, off. Now I did debounce this button in the programming. I didn't use hardware to debounce it. I just debounced it in the uh, the software. It's pretty simple to do. Otherwise, you can add a capacitor in there and it'll debounce it uh, quite a bit. Otherwise, there's other ways to do that. Um, what was that Schmidt trigger? I think it's called. Works for debouncing them. But what I'm using here is I've got an HCL5 and that's set as a master and I have an HCL6 which I didn't have to do anything to. That's just a slave. I didn't do any reprogramming, nothing to it. And in AT commands, I just um, set the uh, HCL5 to be the master because by default it's a slave. So you do have to go into the AT commands. And I will be doing a video on that. Otherwise, if I don't have it up yet, there is a lot of videos on YouTube on how to get into the AT commands. So check that out if you don't know how to do it. But I just set it to be a master, and then I set it to auto-connect to any Bluetooth device that I have turned on that's within range. Now, you can assign it to only connect to a specific address. And uh, when I do that video about the AT commands, I'll show how to do that. But I use this, I'm uh, going to be using this HCL5 with a lot of different projects, and I have a whole bunch of these HCL6s. So instead of having to reprogram it every time, I just set it, it'll automatically connect to whatever Bluetooth device it's within range that has the same password. And these both have the default password, one, two, three, four. All right. Um, oh, my battery's about to die on the camcorder here, I just noticed. So um, how to set this up, I have another video. Um, check that out. It shows how to set your Bluetooth board up using a logic level converter because of course these are 3.3 volt logic and the Arduino is 5 volt and I have a video on how to do that and uh, if I remember I'll put a link to that below. Alright so I'm going to fire up the computer and bring up the Arduino sketch so I'll catch you over there in just a moment and uh, we'll go through the sketch and how to make these communicate with each other. Okay, I've got the Arduino IDE opened up here, and uh, there is actually two sketches for this project. Um, we're going to go over the sketch for the master Bluetooth board first, and then we'll go over the slave, the HCL6, the board that turns the LED off and on. Now, this is the master board. This is the one that has the HCL5 connected to it and the push button to turn the LED off and on. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot to this. Um, this is just, you know, a basic description of how to do it. And like I said earlier, there's lots of different applications for this. I'm just showing you how to get it set up and get started. And then you can play with it 
further from that and uh, set this up um, to use with your own project. And like I said, I'm going to be doing some more videos on this. I'm going to most likely do one with the uh, the joystick and uh, maybe I'll do another one reading a sensor and having the other board turn a relay on or something. But uh, all right, well, let's just get right into the sketch. And uh, <clears throat> what we have first is an integer, and that's the value. And the value is going to be the button, if it's high or low. Then I'm defining the button, and I have the button on pin 3. You can use any pin you want um, if you're going to you know, try this out the way I have it uh, done up. But um, you can use any pin, just make sure to change that. Then we get into the void setup, and we're starting the serial, and I'm running 9600 on both boards. Make sure both your Bluetooth modules are set to the same communication speed. And 9600, that's pretty much the default programmed with from the factory. Some of the HCL5s run the, the 5700 or something like that. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So just make sure you're running 9600 on both. And uh, you can check that in AT commands. Your HCL6 from the factory is going to be 9600. They all come that way, but the uh, the HCL5, some of them are 9600, some of them are the, the 5700 or whatever the heck it was. I can't remember offhand. It was 57 something. And next we're setting our pin mode for the button, and we're setting that as an input. Then we're going down to the void loop, and what we're doing is we're using that integer, the val, which stands for value, and we're digital reading the button. If the val is detected high, which means the button's pushed. If it wasn't, it'd be low, and it would just skip this. But if the button is high, or serial.write, a value of 100. Now, you can use pretty much any value you want in there. Just make sure it's a one-byte number. Um, I'm not too sure how you could set uh, the Arduino up for a two-byte. Um, I do, with a lot of my other... Bluetooth controlled uh, apps. I do. I send a two byte number, and there's a formula to convert the two byte to a one. I'm not sure if you can make the Arduino send a two byte number or not, but uh, one byte gives you quite a bit of range, and you can get up to a pretty large number. Then uh, I also said I software debounced the button, and I did it the stupid, simple, easy way. I just put a half second delay. After it detects the button goes high, that way it's not jumping back and forth. And a half a second is enough time to push the button and let go. If you do hold the button down, it will flash on and off every um, about half a second. But a half a second is more than enough time. Um, there are ways to, to uh, do debouncing in hardware. And there are some other more complicated ways to debounce a button in the software. But uh, just for this tutorial, I didn't need to go through all that. Just by putting this little delay in there, it takes care of the button bounce. And then I have another delay down here, and this continuously runs. This delay only activates when the button is detected being high, as the, which means you've pushed it. This little delay is just for stability. It, uh, it works a lot better. You can run it without, but I found it runs a lot smoother between a 10 and 50 millisecond, which is really, really darn quick. And um, it's not going to interfere. I mean, that's 50. It's running through faster than you could push and release as fast as you could. That's It's going to pick it up. All right, and that's all there is to the, the first board and that's the one that has the HCL5 on it which is the master. Now let's take a look at the sketch for the slave board and I'm using HCL6. Now you can use two HCL5s if you wanted just make sure the second one is set to slave. You don't want them both to be master it's not gonna work. Uh, just trust me it is not gonna work. So this is the sketch for the board with the HCL6, our slave board, and this is the one that has the LED on it. So of course we're defining 
and we're calling it LED, which is what it is, and it's on pin 2. Then I have an integer here, and this is position. Um, there's other ways to do this. I just like using the integer 0 or 1, and it just it's keeping track of if the LED is on or if it's off. That way, if the button it receives that 100 again, it knows, okay, it was on, now let's turn it off, or it was off, now let's turn it on. Then we've got another integer, and that's our value, and that's the value that's coming in, and we're going to be looking for a value of 100. And like I said, you could use any value you want to send, and you could use potentiometers to send values. You could use sensors. I mean, you're not just stuck with a high or a low. There's lots of applications, and like I said, I'm going to be doing that joystick tutorial um, probably within the next week and we'll get more in depth into that in that tutorial so next we have our void set up and of course we're running our serial at 9600 then uh, the pin mode the LED is an output of course and down to our void loop if serial dot available is greater than zero which if it wasn't greater than zero there wouldn't be any serial data so it's not going to read but if it's greater than zero goes down and goes val equals serial dot read so we're bringing that value in then we're checking if value equals 100 and the position like i said just a few moments ago the position is just keeping track of if the led is on or off so to start with it's going to be off so it's checking if it's at zero so if it's at zero, it's digitally writing the LED high, turning it on. And then we're setting the position equal to one, which means it's on. Then we get to our else if statement. So if the value equals 100 and position equals one, which means it's turned on, it digital writes the LED low, turning the LED off, and then sets the position to zero. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Um, I know this is kind of just a basic run-through of how it works, and that's what I wanted to do on this video. In a couple of my next upcoming videos, we're going to get more in-depth on sending values from um, an analog joystick, and I'll probably do one using some sensor readings and stuff to trigger a relay or something on the other board. So uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to see those. And I do multiple videos every week. Um, I've been trying to get to the point of doing one a day, but it's kind of about one every other day right now, and once in a great while, two in a day. If um, I've got enough time on my hands, I'll throw two in one day. But um, Now, these sketches can be found on the website if you want to try building this to try it out before you set this up for your own project. Just go to the website and you'll find that uh, link to it in the description below. And I'll have both these sketches on there. And I'll have some links to where you can get the HCL5s and L6s if you don't have them. And um, I'll throw a link to my other video on how to set up your HCL5 and 6 with the logic level converters. Because like I said, if you hooked the Bluetooth module straight to your Arduino, it's going to work for a short time, and then it's going to just crap out. You're going to fry it because the HC06s and HC05s are 3.3 volt logic. And using the logic level converter, it converts it both ways. Coming in, it converts it to 3.3. Coming out of the Bluetooth module, it converts to 5 to the Arduino. And it makes it run a lot smoother there are a lot of people that use voltage dividers to do this. Now, yes, it does work, but the logic level converter works way better than the voltage dividers, and they're super cheap. You're talking like a dollar something if you're just ordering one. And if you order, you know, five, six of them at one time, you're going to get them cheaper. Um, let me try to think. Is there anything else to go over here? I don't think so. And like I said, I'll have links to all this on the website. And I'll, of course, I'll have that uh, the video I did on how to connect the Bluetooth modules. And um, we'll have the sketches on there and some links to where to get them if you don't have them. Um, 
I order most of my stuff from either Amazon or Deals Extreme. I try to stay away from eBay. Um, they just kind of ticked me off years back. I used to sell on eBay and, well, <laughs> don't need to bore you with that story, but I just try to stay away from them. But you can get the, these parts on there as well, and it's up to you where to order them from. All right, with that, uh, if you did find this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it big time. And remember to subscribe because I do lots of videos and most of them are dealing with microcontrollers, um, primarily the Arduino and uh, some MIT App Inventor stuff. And on an occasion, I'll do a product review and I also do a little bit with photography once in a great while. So subscribe. All right. Well, thanks for joining us here at the Z Hut today. I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.